aware, the International Day of Yoga was declared on June 21st in 2014 by the United Nations General Assembly in response to a personal appeal made by the Indian Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji. So on this occasion of the fourth International Day of Yoga, I'd like to listen and invite all of us to listen to the message from the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji, followed by a message from the External Affairs Minister of India, Sri Madhi Shushma Swaraj ji. If we can play the audio, Treasure gifts given by the ancient Indian sages to humankind. It is said in the Bhagavad Gita, Samatvam Yoga Uchate. It means yoga is a state of equilibrium and equanimity. Yoga is not just a set of exercises that keeps the body fit. It is a passport to health assurance, a key to fitness and wellness. Yoga is not only what we practice in the morning, doing our day-to-day -day activities with diligence, and complete awareness is yoga as well. Free from illness, a path to wellness, that is the path of yoga. Because it teaches us to see others the same as ourselves. Yoga makes us better individuals in thought, action, knowledge, and devotion. Yoga achieves oneness through oneness. It brings about oneness among the mind, body, and intellect. We begin to understand ourselves much better which also makes us understand others better. When we understand ourselves, we become ready to form a constructive bond with the society at large, a bond of oneness with our families, with the society, with living, with fellow humans, with all the birds, animals, trees, with whom we share our beautiful planet. Thus, yoga is the journey from me to we, aham to vayam. The problems of modern lifestyles are well known. We have found ways to control communicable disease. But the focus is now shifting to dealing with non-communicable lifestyle disease. People suffer from stress-related ailments and also lifestyle-related disease like diabetes and hypertension. Stress and depression have become silent killers. Yoga offers a solution to these elements. Practicing yoga helps fight stress and find peace. If the body is a temple of the mind, yoga creates a beautiful temple. Yoga is ideal for relaxation. Many times when you are 
tired. A cold shower refreshes you. In the same way, practicing yoga will truly relax the mind and body. Yoga goes beyond boundaries of age, gender, caste, creed, religion, and nations. Yoga does not discriminate between anybody. All you need is willingness to practice it. In a world of excess, yoga promises restraint and balance. In a world suffering from mental stress, yoga promises calm. In a distracted world, yoga helps focus in a world of fear. Yoga promises hope, strength and courage. Yoga gives peace of mind. People who are at peace with themselves are at peace with others too. Such people build harmonious nations. Such nations build harmonious world. I am happy that the popularity of yoga is on the rise globally. With more people embracing yoga, the demand for yoga teachers is also rising. Our next challenge is to produce institutionally trained yoga teachers, standard yoga system, who can ignite this flame further, especially among the youth. I wish you all Happy Yoga Practicing. Yog, Keval Vyayam. Yog, Ek Tanav Grasth Vyakti Ka Tanav Vapas Leta Hai, Dhur Karke Usse Tanav Rahit Banata Hai. Yog, Ashant Man Ko Shant Karta Hai. Is Lee Aayye, Hum Sab Yog Ko Apnaayin, Apna Man Bhi Shant Karein, Aur Vishwa Shanti Ke Maad Par Aage Vahe. With that blessing and starting, I'd like to translate the message that you just heard from the External Affairs Minister, Srimati Shushma Swarajji. She says, yoga is not an exercise only. Yoga removes stress of an individual and keeps the person free from any stressful condition. Yoga also helps us calm the mind. Let's adopt yoga in our daily life to have mental peace and also for a peaceful world. With that, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm honored to be the MC for the event, Aparna Ramaswamy. I am representing the Sri Shiva Vishnu Temple and of course the larger Indian community here. I'd like to give a very brief history First International Yoga Day that started in 2015, organized by the Embassy of India in Washington, D.C. And since then, they've been organizing yoga events every year in cooperation with various partner organizations. We're delighted to have the trend continue and to have all of you wonderful yogis and yoginis join us this year around too. At this point, I'd like to honor the Virginia State Delegate Danica Reem, and I invite the Ambassador, His Excellency, Srinathej Sarna, to please come onto the stage. Thank you, good morning to all of you and thank you all for turning up very early on a Saturday morning in such great numbers on a very, very sunny morning. It shows the huge enthusiasm that yoga has gathered amongst all of us 
and all over the world. It was always a popular discipline, but I think a qualitative and a quantitative change has come since 2014, when under the guidance and inspiration of Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi, the United Nations recognized the 21st of June as the International Day of Yoga. And it recognized it through a resolution which had a record co-sponsorship of 177 countries. This is an endorsement like no other that the world has accepted, as the Prime Minister called it, one of the ancient gift of Indian sages to humanity. I think the Prime Minister's words have clearly delineated that this is a journey inwards. And I think something that comes in the way of inward journeys is long speeches by the ambassadors. So, I'll not say too much more. I would like to thank all our partner organizations which have helped us to bring this day together. I would like to thank all the enthusiasts from the community and from the American citizenship, the leadership which have supported and encouraged this effort. We have the Virginia State Delegate Danica on stage. We have several honorable representatives of other countries, the Ambassador of Mauritius, the Ambassador of Myanmar, Shaja Affairs of Sri Lanka amongst us. And we also are privileged to have got messages of support from the Governor of Virginia, as well as Senator Tim McCain, Congressman Don Baer, Congressman Raja Krishnamurti, and Congressman Gerald Connolly. We thank all of them for their support and encouragement, and we are sure that in the years to come, this effort will grow from strength to strength, and one day perhaps you'll have a yoga day which stretches from the capital to the monument. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If I could please invite Stanley Karim. Thank, so thank you so much, Ambassador, and thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> Sorry about the uh, cracking throat here. Uh, my name is Dana Carome. I'm proud to represent the people of the city of Manassas Park and the Prince William County portions of Manassas, Gainesville, and Haymarket in the Virginia House of Delegates in the 13th District. And I'm proud to be a committed yogini uh, whose practice began in 2013 where I was laid off from one job on a Friday and my yoga practice began on a Monday. And that first class, I didn't have a hair tie, I ate my hair, it was hot, it was not the best day. But then I went back the second day and from that point on, it was transformational. And I hope what every person gets out of this today is that yoga is the antithesis of the modern competition that we have in the world where we try to one-up each other, where we try to you know, basically, how quickly can we get from place to place and do thing to thing? Yoga is about that endurance in the moment. And the only competition is with yourself. And it's that moment of harmony, that moment of peace, in which we demonstrate the practice in the physical sense so that it works for us. But at the same time, we know that once we're off the mat, we bring it into the world through seva, our art of service through ahimsa, through nonviolence, And at the same time, we don't just practice yoga on a mat, we demonstrate it in the world. And I can say for sure, without any doubt, that yoga was absolutely fundamental to helping me find confidence in myself to be the woman who I am today. And it was absolutely instrumental in my transition as well, because being in a yoga studio was the first time outside of just going to gay clubs and a few like other small places or friends' houses where I could just present as myself and be safe and welcome to be there because yoga does not have judgment. 
Yoga is not the thing where we look each other up and down and say, oh, well, they're going this fast, I need to do this much. It is simply welcome. I'm glad you're here. And to all of you who are here, welcome. All of us are so glad you're here. We are doing this together. And in that spirit of yoga in which yoga is unity, we are united today on our national lawn here. Thank you all so much for coming here. Have a great practice. Namaste. Thank you. What a beautiful message. I'd like to welcome Mr. Satish Korpe to the stage. Thank you. Uh, I have brought a uh, few messages from Virginia officials. Uh, the Honorable Amb Ambassador just mentioned their names, Senator Tim Kaine, Congressman Don Byer, Congressman Jerry Connolly, and uh, Governor Ralph Northam. So I'm just going to take 30 seconds to read the Governor's message, with your permission. Uh, it says, Dear friends, on behalf of the Commonwealth of Virginia, I am pleased to welcome everyone attending the fourth annual International Day of Yoga celebration. I would like to thank the Embassy of India and the Friends of Yoga for all that you do to make this great event possible. Yoga is an ancient Indian tradition which exemplifies the harmony between one and the nature. This event serves as an opportunity for Virginians to experience authentic Indian culture by participating in one of India's most cherished traditions. It warms my heart to see so many Virginians coming together to celebrate our rich culture and diversity. The Commonwealth of Virginia is proud to join those celebrating the fourth annual International Yoga Day celebration in Washington, D.C., and I send my best wishes for the successful celebration. Ralph Northam, Governor of Virginia. I'm mindful that the sun's beating down on you all, but in to respect others who have sent in, I'm just going to read a phrase with your permission. Uh, Timothy Kane writes about, while the idea of International Yoga Day is new, this art is built upon ancient Indian principles, born of a desire to maintain inner well-being. Yoga symbolizes unity of mind, body, and spirit. Congressman Donald Bayer writes, the International Yoga Day is a time to share, deepen, and celebrate the dimensions of yoga. We have well wishes from Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy. And we have Gerald Connolly who writes that this celebration is a testament to the transformative nature of yoga and the Indian American's community's indelible mark on the cultural fabric of the United States. So, with your permission, I would like to welcome everyone and get started with the actual event. Sure. I'd like to call upon the yoga demonstrators to stage, and as they come on, I will just take a moment to announce the commencement of the Common Yoga Protocol. If you all could please come on to the stage so everybody sees them and we'll have some of them moving on to the sub stages so you have closer access in the event you want to watch them. We are honored to have Mr. Mokshadaji lead us in the session. He is an appointee by the Irish Ministry. I'd like to inform everyone about the health advisory that is usually followed during the practice of yoga. So we have all of the demonstrators here. If we could just give them a round of applause to welcome, support them. And if I could ask the gentlemen who are going on to the sub stages to please go get, get on to their positions. And we will remove the podium in just a minute once I'm done talking. Maybe I should grab my paper. So the health advisories, you will actually hear them as a part of the um, recording. So the guiding principles are that yoga needs to be practiced on an empty or light stomach. You typically will wear light and comfortable clothes and please be well aware of your own capacity. Do not do something just because a person next to you is doing it. If you've been cautioned against doing any exercises by your healthcare professional, please take care of yourself. So I invite Shri Mokshraji 
to please get onto their mats and guide us with the postures as per the common yoga protocol. This protocol is to create general awareness towards achieving harmony and peace through yoga. Namaste, if everybody can fold their hands together in the traditional way, prepare yourself for yoga and bowing to the presence in and around us. Namaste. Kriyas or loosening practices to increase microcirculation. Neck exercises, forward and backward neck bending. Stand in an alert posture. Keep feet comfortably apart and your arms on the waist. Exhale and bend head forward slowly and try to touch the chin to the chest. Inhale, move the head as far back as is comfortable. Repeat two more times. Exhale and bend head forward slowly and try to touch the chin to the chest. Inhale, move the head as far back as is comfortable. Exhale and bend head forward slowly and try to touch the chin to the chest. Inhale, move the head as far back as is comfortable. Bring the head to normal position. Relax. Right and left neck bending. Exhale, bend the head slowly to the right. Bring the ear as close as possible to the shoulder. Inhale, bring the head to normal position. Exhale, Bend the head to the left side. Inhale. Bring the head up 
to normal position. Repeat two more times. Exhale, bend the head slowly to the right. Bring the ear as close as possible to the shoulder. Inhale, bring the head to normal position. Exhale, bend the head to the left side. Inhale, bring the head up to normal position. Exhale, bend the head slowly to the right. Bring the ear as close as possible to the shoulder. Inhale, bring the head to normal position. Exhale, bend the head to the left side. Inhale, bring the head up to normal position. Relax. Right and left twisting. Exhale, gently turn the head to the right side so that the chin is in line with the shoulder. Inhale, bring the head to the normal position. Exhale, turn the head to the left side. Inhale and bring the head to the normal position. Repeat two more times. Exhale, gently turn the head to the right side so that the chin is in line with the shoulder. Inhale, bring the head to the normal position. Exhale, turn the head to the left side. Inhale, and bring the head to the normal position. Exhale. Gently turn the head to the right side so that the chin is in line with the shoulder. Inhale. Bring the head to the normal position. Exhale. Turn the head to the left side. Inhale and bring the head to the normal position. Relax. neck rotation. People with neck pain and spondylitis should do the practice gently. Bend the head forward trying to touch the chin to the chest. Inhale, slowly rotate the head clockwise. While coming down, exhale. Rotate the head in anti-clockwise direction. Repeat two more times. Inhale, slowly rotate the head clockwise. While coming down, exhale. Rotate the head in anti-clockwise direction. Inhale, slowly rotate the head clockwise. While coming down, exhale. Rotate the head in anti-clockwise direction. Feel the stretch around the neck and loosening up of the joints and muscles of the neck and release of tension in the neck. Relax. Shoulder movements. Feet together, make the body straight. The arms by the sides. Inhale. Raise both the arms sideways above your head with the palms outwards. Exhale and bring them down in the same manner. The arms must not touch the head when going up or the thighs when coming down. The palms must be open with the fingers together. Repeat two more times. Inhale. Raise both the arms sideways above your head with the palms outwards. Exhale and bring them down in the same manner. Inhale. Raise both the arms sideways above your head with the palms outwards. Exhale and bring them down in the same manner. Relax. Shoulder rotation. Full rotation of both the elbows in a circular manner. Stand erect. Raise both the arms. Place the fingers of the left hand on the left shoulder and the fingers of the right hand on the right shoulder. 
Try to touch the elbows in front of the chest. Rotate while moving up and touch the ears. Stretch the arm back in the backward movement and touch the sides of the trunk while coming down. Repeat two more times. Rotate while moving up and touch the ears. Stretch the arm back in the backward movement and touch the sides of the trunk while coming down. Rotate while moving up and touch the ears. Stretch the arm back in the backward movement and touch the sides of the trunk while coming down. Try to touch the elbows in front of the chest. Do the same anti-clockwise. Rotate while coming down and touch the sides of the trunk. Stretch the arm back in the backward movement and touch the ears while coming down. Try to touch the elbows in front of the chest on the forward movement. Rotate while coming down and touch the sides of the trunk. Stretch the arm back in the backward movement and touch the ears while coming down. Try to touch the elbows in front of the chest on the forward movement. Rotate while coming down and touch the sides of the trunk. Stretch the arm back in the backward movement and touch the ears while coming down. Try to touch the elbows in front of the chest. Relax. Practice of this Kriya makes the bones, muscles and nerves of the shoulder region healthy. These practices are helpful in cervical spondylitis and frozen shoulder. Trunk twisting. Avoid this practice in case of vertebral and disc disorders and during menstruation. Keep the legs about two feet apart. Raise both the arms up to chest level with the palms facing each other. Exhale, twist the body towards the right side so that the left palm touches the right shoulder. Come back with inhalation. Now, exhale, twist the body towards the left side so that the right palm touches the left shoulder. Come back with inhalation. Repeat two more times. Do slowly with breathing. Exhale, twist the body towards the right side so that the left palm touches the right shoulder. Come back with inhalation. Now exhale, twist the body towards the left side so that the right palm touches the left shoulder. Come back with inhalation. Exhale, twist the body towards the right side so that the left palm touches the right shoulder. Come back with inhalation. Now exhale, twist the body towards the left side so that the right palm touches the left shoulder. Come back with inhalation. Relax in standing posture. Knee movements. Avoid this in case suffering from acute arthritis. Inhale, lift your arms up at the shoulder level. Exhale, bend the knees and bring down your body to the squatting position. Inhale and straighten the body. Repeat two more times. Exhale, bend the knees and bring down your body to the squatting position. Inhale and straighten the body. Exhale, bend the knees and bring down your body to the squatting position. Inhale and straighten the body. Exhale while bringing down the hands. Relax. This practice strengthens the knees and hip joints. Now, let us move to Yogasana. Tarasana. 
Dao means palm tree. Keep your feet two inches apart. Interlock the fingers and turn the wrist outwards. Inhale, raise the arms up and bring them in line with the shoulders. Raise the heels off the floor and balance on the toes. Stay in this position for 10 to 15 seconds. This asan brings stability in the body, helps to clear up congestion of the spinal nerves, corrects faulty posture. Exhale, bring the heels down. Release the interlock of the fingers and bring the arms down parallel to the trunk and come back to a standing posture. Relax. Vrikshasana. Vriksh means tree. Avoid this practice in case of arthritis and obesity. Stand with the feet two inches apart. Focus on a point in front. Exhale, bend the right leg and place the foot on the inside of the left thigh. The heel should be touching the perineum. Inhale and extend the arms up and join the palms. Stay in this position for 10 to 15 seconds and breathe normally. This improves neuromuscular coordination, endurance and alertness. Exhale and bring the arms and right foot down. Bend the left leg and place the foot on the right thigh. The heel should touch the perineum. Inhale, extend the arms up and join the palms. Exhale and bring the arms and foot down. Relax. Padhastasana. Pada means foot. Hasta means hand. Stand with the feet two inches apart. Inhale slowly and raise the arms up. Stretch up the body from the waist. Exhale and bend forward until the entire palm rests on the ground. Maintain this final posture for 10 to 30 seconds. Those who have a stiff back should bend according to their capacity. Now inhale, come up slowly to the vertical position and stretch the arms above the head. Exhale and slowly return to the starting position. Relax. Ardha Chaprasan. Hypertensive patients shall bend with care. Keep your feet two inches apart. Support the back at the waist. Exhale. Drop the head backwards. Stretch the neck muscles. And bend backwards from the lumbar region. Stay there with normal breathing for 10 to 30 seconds. Ardha Chakra makes the spine flexible and strengthens the spinal nerves and improves breathing capacity. Inhale and slowly come up and relax. Trikonasana. Trikon means triangle. Avoid this posture in case of slipped disc, sciatica and after undergoing abdominal surgery. Do not go beyond your limits. Stand with your feet comfortably apart. Slowly raise both the arms sideways till they are horizontal. Exhale, slowly bend to the right side and place the right hand just behind the right foot. The left arm is straight up in line with the right arm. Remain in this posture for 10 to 30 seconds with normal breathing. This prevents flat foot strengthens the calf, thigh and waist muscles, makes the spine flexible. As you inhale, slowly come up. Repeat for the left side. Exhale, slowly bend to the left side and place the left hand just behind the left foot. The right arm is straight up, in line with the left arm. 
Remain in this posture for 10 to 30 seconds with normal breathing. As you inhale, slowly come up. Stand with your feet comfortably apart. Relax. Let us now get ready for sitting postures. Sit erect with the legs stretched out straight in front. Bhadrasana. Bhadra means firm. Avoid this practice in case of severe arthritis and sciatica. Sit erect with the legs stretched out straight in front. Keep the hands beside the hips. This is Dandasana. Now put the soles of your feet together. Exhale and clasp your hands together over your toes. Pull your heels as close as possible up to the perineum region. This is the final position. Stay here for some time. Padrasana keeps the body firm and stabilizes the mind. Now stretch your leg and come to Vishramasana. Relax. Vajrasana. Sit in Danda Asana. Fold your legs and sit on your heels. Keep the thighs close and big toes touching. Place the hands on the knees. The head and back should be straight. This is Vajrasana. Ardha Ushtrasana. Sit in Vajrasana. Get up on your knees. Place the hands on the waist with the fingers pointing downwards. Keep the elbows and shoulders parallel. Bend the head back and stretch the neck muscles and bend the trunk backwards as much as possible. Remain in this posture for 10 to 30 seconds with normal breathing. It helps to strengthen the back and neck muscles, relieves constipation and back pain. Return with inhalation. Sit in Vajrasana. Relax. Now we perform the full version of Ushtrasana. Sit in Vajrasana. Those suffering from high blood pressure Heart disease and hernia should not practice this. Keep your thighs and feet together. Get up on your knees. Bring the knees and the feet a few inches apart. While inhaling, bend backwards. Place the right palm on the right heel and the left palm on the left heel. Be careful not to jerk the neck while bending backwards. Return with inhalation. Sit in Vajrasana. Relax. Ushtrasana is extremely useful for defective eyesight. This is useful in relieving back pain and neck pain. It helps to reduce fat over the abdomen and hips. Shashankasana. Shashank means hair. Patients with osteoarthritis should do this with caution. Spread both the knees wide apart. Keep the toes touching. Keep the palms between the knees. Exhale and slowly stretch them full length. Bend forward and place the chin on the ground. Keep the arms parallel. Look in front and maintain the posture. This helps to reduce stress and anger. Inhale and come up. Exhale and come back to Vajrasana. Relax. 
Uttan Manduk Asana. Persons with severe knee joint pain should not perform it. The final position of Uttan Manduk Asana resembles an upright frog, hence the name. Sit in Vajra Asana. Spread both the knees wide apart while the toes remain together. Inhale, raise both the arms. Then cross both arms behind the head and place the hands on the upper part of the opposite shoulders. Keep the back and neck straight. Maintain this position for a while. This asana is helpful in backache and cervical pain. It helps in improving diaphragmatic movement and helps to improve lung capacity. While coming back, slowly raise both the arms with inhalation and bring the knees together as in the initial position. Relax, sit erect with the legs stretched out straight in front. Vakrasan Vakra means twisted. Sit in Danda Asana. Bend the right leg and place the right foot beside the left knee. Bring the left arm around the right knee and place the palm beside the right foot. Exhale, twist the body and neck to the right. Comfortably remain in this posture. Turn your head back. Take out your hands with exhalation. Stretch your legs. Now come back and relax in Vishram Asana. This asana increases flexibility of the spine. It helps to overcome constipation, dyspepsia and in the management of diabetes. Repeat the same on the other side. Sit in Danda Asana. Bend the left leg and place the left foot beside the right knee. Bring the right arm around the left knee and place the palm beside the left foot. Exhale, twist the body and neck to the left. Comfortably remain in this posture. Now come back, take out your hands with exhale.